if you have seen these guys, you would realize the importance of a positive attitude, too. So I'll start with this guy. I was in the military. I was like a 28, 29, 30-year-old, I don't know, junior captain. And I met a new commander. And the commander, the boss of the whole 349th Military Airlift Wing, you know, thousands of people, lots of airplanes. I was the commander of a little teeny part of it, communications group. I, I got to the point where I said, I don't mean to pry, but how is it? You're pretty young, and you're already a general. And he said, son, you know, and I'm all five years younger than him, you know. <laughs> he said, son, there's this, if there's any secret to my success, it's PMA. Positive mental attitude. Positive mental attitude. How did he get a job on the weekend, one weekend a month, a thousand miles away? He just said, I thought I could do a lot of different things, so I had a positive attitude about it. So I, when people said, maybe there's an opportunity way over there, I said, and I was convinced by that guy, and I tried to change my military behavior to some extent after that, uh, just thinking, well, you know, if something goes wrong or right, whatever, try to look at the bright side. So the next guy would be Jerry, the guy that got shot. One day, or actually one night, late at night, he went to, he was finished work, and he went to put the money in the safe, and at exactly that time, because everybody was gone, exactly that time, two robbers came in with guns, saying, give us all the money. So he was trying to undo the safe combination thing, but his, he was so nervous that his hand slipped off the safe combination wheel, slipped off there, and they thought he was trying to pull off some kind of a trick. So one of the guys panicked and shot, and they shot the guy. So here's Jerry shot. Somebody found him right away, called the hospital, called the ambulance, and he said the ambulance, the guy in the ambulance was good, also said, you're going to be okay. Hang in there. Don't quit. But he got to the hospital. Supposedly a true story, downloaded from the web. It's got the, the, the name of the guy in there, anyhow. Got to the hospital, they wheel him into the operating room, and there's four or five nurses and doctors around, and he looked around, he was still conscious, he looked around, and he could see the look on everybody's face. This is a dead man. He just caught the look on their face. And he said, somehow i got to change their attitude. So, and he's just thinking about this exactly when the, when a, a, a big nurse said, are you allergic to anything? And he said, he said, yes. Everybody looks, what? Bullets. Okay, he's allergic to bullets, okay. So obviously, so, and then everybody in, the, everybody in the operating room laughed. Because, you know, you don't say I'm allergic to bullets, you know. So they all laughed, and then he said, listen to me. Operate on me as if I'm alive, not as if I'm dead. I want to live. And he thinks, not just the credit, not just the surgeons were good, but that he'd got them in the right mood. They tried everything they could because he had the right attitude. And he survived, and later he goes around, see my scars? You know, he, uh, and he's back in the restaurant business, all because of positive mental attitude. Okay, third one. Now, I lived in California for a long time. And at one point, I lived in... California next to a guy that was a nice guy, old guy. I mean, he was old, man. He's probably as old as I am now. Okay, this is when I was a lot young. This old guy, and I remember talking to him. He was just getting ready to retire. I lived there for, I lived there for like seven years. He was getting ready to retire from his job as a printer. He liked his job as a printer, and he'd saved up lots of money because he had this dream of retirement. And what he was going to do is take his wife, Alice, on a driving trip around the United States. He's going to drive all the way across America. It's a beautiful country, nice to do. And now he's, got, he's retired so they can take a year. You know, camp here, camp there, whatever. And just about the time he retired, his wife, well, no, first was, his eyes got so bad, they took away his driver's license. He cannot drive around the United States anymore. Because he's lost, he can still see fine, but not to drive. So he took away his driver's license. So after they took away his driver's license, then 
doesn't seem to impact him that bad. But they took away his driver's license. So then he's still doing okay. They just take little local trips and everything. His wife, Alice, who's also old, contracts Alzheimer's disease. You know about that one? Alzheimer's disease? The disease where you forget everything, forget who you are, forget where you live, forget your name. She started wandering away from home. Now, I don't have it yet, Josh. Okay. Pieces of it. But anyhow, anyhow, forgot where she lived. The police would bring her back home. They had to put a gate and a lock so she wouldn't wander out around the neighborhood and get lost. Finally, Alice got so bad, she had to go to a hospital. You know, like permanent hospitalization. And think about it. In California and in many parts of the world, if you're very, very poor, how much does hospital cost? If you're very, very poor, you can get in free, right? What was this guy's financial status? Somebody tell me. He'd saved a lot of money. So therefore, all the money he'd saved up had to be applied to his wife's hospital. He couldn't get anything free because he had all his money. So he had all his money. Now, by the way, so now the guy, what does the guy do? This idea of a dream around the country is gone. Uh, a drive around the country, that, that didn't work. It, basically, everything is gone. And you know what he did? Can you picture the, the houses you see in California in the movies? They got a front yard with a grass lawn, you know. He dug up his lawn and he planted tomatoes and corn and cucumbers and squash. And he had so much vegetables there, you'd think it was a farm. And, he was, and he'd come over to people's houses, including my house, hey, here's some zucchini. I mean, like a big sack, a sack of zucchini squash. He'd just give it away to people. I come back one day, I walk home from the bus, I take a bus to work, I get off the bus, walk by his house, and there's Ernie in the front yard. It's an absolutely true story. And I remember thinking, you know what? This is like every day he's the same. He was out in the yard playing with his garden, whistling. I wish I could whistle. I can, I can show you. But he was, da, 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 da. I said, I stopped. I didn't know how to ask it gently. But I said, Ernie, it, it doesn't seem like everything has gone quite right. In your, you know, not everything has gone your way. You know what I mean? Uh, and here you are still whistling. And he literally told me this phrase, which you probably heard. He said, I figure if somebody hands me a lemon, I'm going to make lemonade. And he went right back to whistling and right back to working on his tomatoes. So his positive mental attitude meant he had a very happy retirement, even though nothing had gone right. He was a very happy man. Because inside, he had this PMA thing. The last one I'm going to talk about is this girl, Ni Dongyan. Somebody, a teacher, asked a little bit about why is it that she's going home for lunch one day. Because she had to walk in like half an hour to get home for lunch. So why was it? Nine-year-old girl was going home for lunch. And she said, I'm going home for lunch because i got to make my mother some soup. Why do you have to make your mother soup? My mother is mentally retarded. She cannot make her own soup. So I found out, the, the, the teacher looked into it just a little bit more and come to find out that she was going home every day, taking care of her mother. And why was she taking care of her mother? Because her father had died about three months before, and she never complained to anybody. She just figured... Okay, i got to take care of my mentally retarded mother. So she did. Father's dead. She's all by herself. A nine-year-old girl going to school every day, doing her homework, doing okay in school, and taking care of her mother and not complaining to anybody, just doing the job. The girl was nine years old, managing her whole family, just like, that's life. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. TV program picked it up so you know the end of the story. Obviously, then she became a celebrity in the local town and they moved her into a good school. They moved her mother into a, they moved them into a nice house. They got like, you know, they got everything they need now. In fact, is part of it, got it, it really, okay, I have a hard time explaining this because I really think it's important to catch this idea of attitude. 